Shalom, brothers and sisters in Christ. In the name of God, the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit, we welcome you to the fifth episode of Champions for Christ Youth Program. With joy, let us praise our God and listen to His word. Let us sing a song of praise and worship God. Loving Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit of God, our Creator, our Sustainer and our Master. Thank you Lord for calling us in our youth to be beacons of Jesus Christ in this world. Lord, you are our teacher and you have called us as disciples. You have called us as friends. Thank you for helping us to worship you. Speak to us through your living word and inspire us to live as champions for Christ. We ask this prayer in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hey friends, welcome back. The champion of this episode is one of the 12 disciples of Jesus who became the leader of the early church and also the first martyr of the apostles. He is James, the first martyr of the apostles. James was a Jew, a native of Bethsaida of Galilee, which is located in the northern part of Israel. He was named after the ancestor Jacob, the third patriarch. In Hebrew, his name is Yaakov, which means cheater or deceiver. The English translation of this name is Jacob. The Greek translation of this name is Yaakobos, which is translated again into English as James, the person whom we are studying. His father was Zebedee, a prominent fisherman and a businessman in Galilee and Jerusalem. He owned many boats which sailed the Sea of Galilee which were used for fishing. He owned many stores in the fish market. 
and he had several servants who worked under him a wealthy man his mother was salome who was a relative of mary the mother of jesus james had a younger brother his name was john both james and john were professional skilled fishermen who took after their father's business and were fishermen in the sea of galilee so the whole household of james was related to mary the mother of jesus which makes james a cousin of jesus so let us study his life beginning from his meeting with jesus and how jesus used a fisherman like james to be an evangelist to be an apostle to work for the kingdom of god let us study and explore the life of james based on his journeys with jesus let us divide this into two parts from galilee to gethsemane from jerusalem to spain let's study his life the first part of his life is from galilee to gethsemane James received his call of discipleship from Jesus himself on the shore of the sea of Galilee. There were four men who were called from the shore of the sea of Galilee. Peter, Andrew, James and John. All the four were fishermen. Jesus called these four to leave their profession, to leave being fishermen and follow him. by being his disciples in jesus words he called them to stop being fishermen and become fishers of men one day in jesus's ministry as he walked by the shore of the sea of galilee he saw two fishermen casting a net into the sea they were peter and his brother andrew he saw them and he called them by name and he said follow me immediately the two followed jesus as jesus walked further he saw two young fishermen mending the fishing nets they were james and john he saw them and he called them by name immediately they left their nets in the boat and followed jesus let's read mark chapter 1 verses 16 And as he walked by the sea of Galilee he saw Simon and Andrew his brother casting a net into the sea for they were fishermen then Jesus said to them follow me and i will make you become fishers of men immediately they left their nets and followed him when he had gone a little farther from there he saw James the son of Zebedee and John his brother who were also in the boat mending their nets and immediately he called them and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired servants and went after him the discipleship of James began at the sea of Galilee when Jesus called him to be his disciple James was one of the 12 disciples whom Jesus called to be with himself to be his personal disciples personal students personal trainees who were to be sent as apostles into the world to be the leaders of the church 12 great evangelists who saw Jesus and lived with Jesus and witnessed his ministry James was called to be one among them. Among the 12 disciples, two disciples had the name James. James, the son of Zebedee, James, the son of Alphaeus. To distinguish between the two, James, the son of Zebedee, was named James the Greater. James, the son of Alphaeus, was named James the Lesser. So James the Greater and James the lesser so beginning from the shore of the sea of galilee james traveled with jesus in his ministry to the region of galilee to the region of judea 
the region of Decapolis and the region of Samaria. In Galilee, he went with Jesus to Cana, Capernaum, Caesarea Philippi, the Sea of Galilee, Thagba and Nazareth. In Judea, he travelled with Jesus to Jerusalem, Bethlehem, Bethany and Jericho. In Samaria, he went with Jesus to the city of Sychar. In Decapolis, he went to the place of Gerasenes. He travelled with Jesus in his three and a half years ministry and was trained by Jesus. In his discipleship, James acquired spiritual traits. The first trait which he acquired was obedience and faith. When James received the call from Jesus on the shore of Galilee to follow him, in obedience he followed Jesus. He did not ask, Who are you? Why should I follow you? But he learnt obedience and followed Jesus by faith without looking back. Let's read Mark chapter 1 verse 20. And immediately he called them and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired servants and went after him. James obeyed Jesus and left his high earning occupation of fishing. He left his family. He left his profession. He left his father. He left his servants and he followed Jesus in obedience. The act of denying himself and going behind Jesus shows his faith. So initially he acquired obedience and faith. Secondly, he obtained love and godly wisdom. Once James was traveling to Jerusalem with Jesus and his disciples, they traveled through the city of Samaria, a place where the inhabitants were a mixed race of Jews. They were called Samaritans. Because of the impurity in the race, the Jews hated the Samaritans and the Samaritans hated the Jews back. When Jesus traveled through the city, he wanted to lodge there for a while to respite, to rest before continuing their journey to Jerusalem. As they approached the city, the villagers refused to take them in and they rejected them harshly. When James saw their response, he was enraged and he asked Jesus, Jesus, can I and my brother command fire to come down from heaven and burn the Samaritans? James portrayed anger and rage and hatred, a thunder-like quality for which Jesus nicknamed him Boanerges, which means sons of thunder or sons of rage. But Jesus rebuked them and he said to them, You do not know what manner of spirit you are of. For the Son of Man did not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. And they went to another village. James expressed his zeal for Jesus, but with the lack of godly wisdom. Jesus corrected him and said, a disciple must not be zealous to destroy people's lives, but must be zealous to show love, even to oppressors, accusers, persecutors and enemies. True zeal accompanied by godly wisdom brings forth love. And Jesus taught James a lesson to love with godly wisdom. The third trait which he acquired is humility and servanthood. James was one of the three disciples who was close to Jesus. Peter, James and John were the closest disciples of the twelve. As a result, they asked questions to Jesus without any constraints and interacted with them without any hesitation. But at times, they took this closeness for granted and asked few things of Jesus which made the other disciples envy them. 
at one incident James came along with his brother John to Jesus and he asked Jesus teacher we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you they expressed their closeness to Jesus Jesus asked them tell me what do you want me to do for you the brothers replied teacher when you come in your glory when you come in your kingdom as king we want to sit next to you let me sit in your right hand let john sit in your left hand they took this closeness for granted and asked jesus of the highest position jesus questioned them again are you ready to experience the pain which i am going to experience can you take it upon yourself as i suffer can you drink the cup which i am about to drink can you be baptized with the baptism that i am baptized with can you me who is going to come as a king must undergo all this can you undergo before asking for an honorable place he questioned them to which the two brothers answered yes we can we will jesus said indeed you will and these things came to pass hearing this conversation between jesus and these two brothers the other disciples envied and were enraged they were displeased with them even peter who was the close disciple of jesus because they demanded for a higher position above the rest but jesus corrected them he chastised them and he taught them a lesson jesus said a true disciple must not seek to be in the authority must not desire to be on the top to be the boss to be proud a disciple must not be filled with pride but a disciple must humble himself must deny himself must be down to earth must consider the others above himself must be a servant and must be a slave let's read mark chapter 10 verses 43 to 45 yet it will not be so among you but whoever desires to become great among you shall be your servant and whoever of you desires to be first shall be slave of all for even the son of man did not come to be served but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many jesus said i your master who is going to come as king have come now as a servant i humbled myself and i am a servant and have come to serve all and to give my life this is my humility so you my disciples must be humble as i am be a servant be a slave be humble and you must possess humility and servanthood at this point in this incident james acquired the trait of humility and servanthood so james from his personal experiences with jesus learned obedience and faith love godly wisdom humility and the trait of servanthood he acquired spiritual traits from his master from his teacher jesus so james traveled with jesus in all the places where he ministered as i said beginning from galilee all the way to jerusalem where jesus spent the last days of his earthly life before his death on the night he was arrested jesus went to the garden of gethsemane to spend some time in prayer he was in agony and he asked james john and peter to accompany him to pray with him and to pray for him james was invited by jesus to share in the agony 
and Jesus asked him to pray three times. But when Jesus was arrested, all the disciples fled from him. They witnessed his death and his burial. James saw the resurrected Jesus two times in Jerusalem. He saw the resurrected Jesus for the third time on the shore of the sea in Galilee. In Galilee, Jesus asked him and all the disciples to go back to Jerusalem and wait there for the promise of the Holy Spirit. They had to wait in Jerusalem and tarry there to receive the promise of the Holy Spirit. This is the first part of the life of James with Jesus from Galilee to Gethsemane. The second part of his life is from Jerusalem to Spain. After Jesus ascended to heaven, James waited in the upper room for the promise of the Holy Spirit with the other 10 disciples and 120 believers of Jesus. According to the promise, he was filled and was baptized by the Holy Spirit. On that day, Peter preached a sermon by which 3,000 people believed on Jesus, were baptized and were added to the church. That was the day the early church was born from the act of the Holy Spirit. Day by day, thousands of believers were added to the church and they grew. James was chosen to be one of the three important pillars of the early church. Peter, James and John became the three important pillars and James was used by God to strengthen and to construct and build and establish the early church. Jesus commanded his believers to be his witnesses beginning from Jerusalem to Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. According to the commandment of Jesus, James began preaching the gospel in Jerusalem. He preached it in Judea and in Samaria. Once he hated the Samaritans but God turned his life to become an evangelist to the Samaritans. From Jerusalem to Judea to Samaria, James went to Spain, the farthest part of the Roman Empire, to preach the gospel. God took James to Spain to preach the gospel of salvation. Many people believed on the message and were saved and were added to the church. When James returned back to Jerusalem, it was the time when Christians were persecuted by the Jews. In order to suppress the believers of Jesus, the Jews thought they were a cult. To suppress them, the Jews tried to threaten the leaders of the church, thinking the believers might become silent. Herod Agrippa, who was a Gentile king over the region of Judea, caught some of the Christians, abused them and harassed them. Since the Jews were also against the Christians, in order to gain their favor, in order to please them, he tried to persecute the Christians, caught some of them and began torturing them. He assumed that by catching one of their leaders, he could suppress the believers and make them desert their faith. So what did he do? He caught James, the leader of the early church, and executed him. James was beheaded by Herod Agrippa I. Let's read. Acts chapter 12, verses 1, 2 and 3. Now about that time, Herod the king stretched out his hand to harass some from the church. Then he killed James the brother of John with the sword. And because he saw that it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to seize Peter also. 
Herod killed James thinking that if the leader is killed the believers will run away from the faith but this did not happen God used James the elder of the church as the seed of martyrdom upon which the church flourishes this was an attempt to suppress the believers but they grew more in faith and more in numbers and James became the first martyr of the apostles and the act of his death made the church flourish even more this is the work of god in the life of james god used him as the seed of the church after his death his followers in spain came back to jerusalem to take his body there and it is now preserved in a place called santiago de compostela a religious shrine which exists even today so god used james in a mighty way to die for his cause and his death made the church flourish even more and he is an example for us james was called by jesus he was trained by jesus blessed by jesus empowered by jesus he lived for jesus he was sent by jesus he witnessed for jesus he built the church of jesus he was persecuted for jesus and he died for jesus this is the champion life of james the apostle by birth a galilean by trade a fisherman by nature zealous by discipleship humble a servant by call an apostle by death a martyr by legacy a champion this is the champion life of james the first martyr of the apostles his life teaches us obedience to god at all times and faith in god without doubt to love even the enemies and to be humble and possess servanthood if we are truly committed to god as james was we too can prosper and come out as champions for christ may god inspire us motivate us and bless us through the life of james god bless you all amen james apostle son of sebede fisherman one of the troll disciples one of inner circle peter james john slain by erod agripa mark chapter 1 verses 15 19 and 20 the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of god is at hand repent and believe in the gospel when he heard gone a little further from there he saw james the son of sabade and john his brother who also were in the boat mending their nets and immediately he called them and they left their father sabade in the boat with the hired servants and went after him mark 3:17 James the son of Zebedee and John the brother of James to whom he gave the name Bonagas that is sons of thunder acts 12:1 now about that time Herod the king stretched out his hand to harass some from the church Then he killed James the brother of John with the sword and because 
he saw that it pleased the jews prayer loving and living lord god thank god for without delay james was obedient unto the calling of jesus christ and followed him he was one of the first apostles called by jesus christ praise god for remember and honored his parents dedication to send their two sons to the ministry thank god for his fervent and generous heart and you identified him on mount tabor and in gethsemane praise god for he served jesus christ eagerly during his time on earth and he devoted himself to his church after he ascended into heaven thank you almighty ever living god through the blood of james you consecrated the first fruits of the ministry of your apostles lord god by the martyrdom of apostle james you blessed of the early church and multiplied lord we really respected and remember apostle james great sacrifice and service in the holy work god please lead us and learn us from his commitment and contribution for establishment of the early church and the extension of your kingdom we dedicate ourselves to the ministry accept us and use us for your glory in the name of jesus christ we pray amen the grace of the lord jesus christ and the love of god and the communion of the holy spirit be with you all Amen. Alleluia.